Hey everybody, it's me, Allie Burns from Picks and Parlays, and it's time for some college football total chaos. It's this Saturday, October the 15th. I've got five college games. I've got two sports betting experts, and I've got one show called Total Chaos, where I'm going to pit them head to head, and they got to tell me if the games are going over or under the totals. Up first, I've got Scott Reichel from Winners and Winers. How's it going, Scott? Doing pretty well. It's been so long, I forgot what my record was. So it seems like uh, I'm starting directly from scratch because I'm back at 500 again. Hey, yeah, there. that's a good way to look at it. Tim Earl, you're a little bit behind, but not by much. Nothing you can't catch up on. 40, 43, and 3 is not bad at all. How are you feeling? Well, I'm, I'm doing good. I feel like I've been about anywhere from three to five games under for the last six months. But, hey, I, I, I seem to just stay, stay pretty consistent and uh, – Maybe I get over my over the uh, over the the five hundred record. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, all right. So before we get started, I got to remind everybody to like and subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and don't forget about our FanDuel promo. <laughs> it's Scott Reichel. No, <laughs> if you sign up to FanDuel, you'll get Scott Reichel on your doorstep. With no, okay. Um, it's a no sweat first bet up to a thousand dollars. All you got to do is find the link in the description of this video and click on it, and it'll take you right there. You'll get all hooked up. And if you're in the state of Ohio, I know you don't go live till January, but they're going to drop a hundred bucks into your account just for downloading today. All right. It's a good deal. Let's get this party started. We've got work to do, gentlemen. We're going to start off with North Carolina at Duke 67 and a half. Tim, what do you got here? That's a low total for basketball. Oh, this is football. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I'm always, hey, these two teams are over 500. I'm not used to seeing both teams over 500 in basketball and uh, in football because Normally, Duke's way down there, and UNC's kind of mm. neutral. Both of them are positive this year. Uh, I'm going to go under. Uh, in the beginning of the year, you saw UNC kind of have a no uh, uh, cover zero defense uh, where they just allowed a lot of points. Since mm -hmm. then, they, they've gone under in three out of their last four. And then on the, other, on the other side, you get Duke, who their only game that's gone over was against an FBS score, a basketball school in NCAA and uh, where they put up 49. Other than that, they played good defense this year. I think 67 and a half is too high for these two teams. All right, Scott, what are your thoughts? I agree. I feel like most people are going to like the over because North Carolina in their head is just a terrible defensive team. I'll tell you what, they're not good defensively, but they have gotten better as the season went on. People just remember the 60 points allowed to App State, and they think that this team hasn't improved at all. They did well against Virginia Tech. I don't know if that means anything because that offense is terrible, but they only gave up 10 points. And they held Miami to 24 points on the road. So I think North Carolina's defense is actually a bit undervalued here. And Duke, yes, I know they had a good start to the season. I'm not sure if the offense is actually that good because they barely did much against Georgia Tech last week and they lost in overtime. I'm going with the under because even if North Carolina scores 42, let's just say that number, I'm not sure Duke gets to 26. So I'm going to go with the under. All right, that's a good call. That's a good call right there. Okay, so next one up, we've got Washington State at Oregon State. Oh, my gosh. You guys are going to take the under on 551 and a half, aren't you? Yeah, I think um, that's a trick <laughs> line. I want the up. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, 51 and a half, Scott Reichel. Tell me something good. So this one is very, very tricky to call, but I'm going to go with the under. Uh, Oregon State might be using a backup quarterback again. I'd have to use a backup since no one was injured before the Stanford game. He couldn't play last week. They won anyway. That game lined at 55. It took a miracle to get to 55 because they had a last-minute, was it, 60-yard touchdown, which the, where the guy mossed somebody. It was really a miracle it even ended up going over that number. But Washington State's been good towards the under this season. Five of Washington State's first six games have had less than 46 points. It is a road game. You know that in Corvallis, the fans will be into it. But with a backup yeah. quarterback, I really don't trust Oregon State's offense. And I'm going to go with the under. All right, Tim, agree or disagree? Uh, I'm going to agree with this. I'm going to go under as well. These are just two teams that are exact opposite. Because you've seen Washington State go under in five out of their first six games. And then Oregon State's gone over in four out of their six. So these two teams are just trending in two different directions. But when it comes to it, I think Washington State's the better team, and they're going to end up being able to control the game a little bit more. More running, meaning probably a lot more time getting killed off the clock and a lower score. So I'll go ahead and grab the under 51 and a half as well. All right, Air Force at UNLV. Little Mountain West matchup, 49 and a half. Tim, lay it on me. 
Oh, yeah. We're going to be even more interesting, and we're going to go right back to the under. Uh, I believe this total has dropped a lot since open. Yeah, it opened up at 54, and it's dropped all the way to 49 and a half. Um, these, normally, when you get Mountain West teams, they're more run-the-ball style. Uh, they're going to be a lot slower paced. Uh, and it's kind of the same deal with basketball as well. You just get a slower paced teams out there. Uh, I just think this one's going to be an uglier game. Air Force, you know, the Academy teams love running that triple option and just run, run, run. So I'm going to go under the total. All right. What about you, Scott? So for this one, I was really torn because similarly to the Oregon State game, UNLV will be using a backup quarterback. So it's pretty difficult to predict. I'm actually going to lean to the over. Historically speaking, UNLV has been awful at stopping the triple option, and I think Air Force could potentially go for 38 or something points in this game. They're off a terrible loss to Utah State. I think they'll be motivated to really lay it on UNLV here. But four of Air Force's first six games have had at least 51 points. The over is 6-1 and one in the last seven meetings, and each of the last 10 meetings have had at least 55 points. And I'll tell you what, Air Force does a lot of that heavy lifting. Do I think that UNLV's offense is good with the backup quarterback? Not really. But Air Force got torched defensively by a backup quarterback with Utah State last week for 34 points. I think UNLV can do enough. I think that Air Force wins this game 42-10, something like that. But I'll end up going with the over. All right. San Jose State and Fresno State, 47 and a hook. Scott Reichel. So for this one, once again, broken record. We have a backup quarterback because Fresno State is missing Jake Herner again, and their backup quarterback's been terrible uh, ever since they ended up having to make the switch. But Fresno State has scored less than 21 points in each of the last three games. San Jose State's allowed less than 18 points in four of its first five games. I just don't think Fresno State contributes much here. And San Jose State's a decent offense with Cordero, who transferred from Hawaii. But they like to run the ball. They like to drain clock. And Fresno's offense couldn't do anything against UConn. They lost to UConn. That's almost impossible to do in football. I'm going with the under because I really don't think Fresno State does much in this game. So I think you'll see a pretty low-scoring game. All right, Tim? Yeah, uh, these two teams are heavy under-trending teams to begin with. Not to mention, they're out west. And out west teams love to run the ball. Uh, and, and when it comes to it, San Jose State, they've gone under in four out of their five. Fresno State under in three out of their five. You're just going to get a slower paced game, and yeah, I'm, I'm going to go under as well. Okay, okay. I Have we agreed? No, we, okay. No, we just we did disagree on Air Force, right? <laughs> it's like, get your tiebreakers ready, because we did do the NFL Total Chaos, and Terry and Sean Higgs, Terry Edelman and Sean Higgs did NFL Total Chaos. They agreed on every single game. It's already out now, so definitely check out that Total Chaos as well for Sunday. Okay, Nevada at Hawaii, 49 and a half to Tim Earl. Oh, this is the this is one of the favorite games that everybody has is that midnight Hawaii game. Yep. You know only, de only degenerates bet the Hawaii game. Remember? Damn that? right. Let's go over. <laughs> <laughs> over with a lot of points. Uh, these Please. two teams suck. Uh, we're not going to sugarcoat this one. These are not good teams. Uh, Hawaii is one in five. Nevada's two and four. I could just see this one being a back and forth ugly game where yeah, you get bad offenses, but you get even worse defenses. This one could easily get up to, into the high 50s, low 60s. I'm going to go over. All right, Scott, what do you say? I'm going to disagree again. I do agree about the premise of both teams being terrible, but I'm going to take the under as a result. Hawaii, is, you're used to the fun run-and-gun teams that would score 30 and 40 with McDonald, the quarterback, and Cordero, but that's not this year. Offensively, they are one of the worst offensive teams in the country. Hawaii's played against five FBS teams this season. It scored less than 18 points in four of those five games. And the one exception was New Mexico State, who's also one of the worst FBS teams in the country. So I don't exactly trust Hawaii to move the ball. Nevada scored less than 21 points in each of its last three games. And a good trend here, the under is 9-0 in the last nine meetings. I'm going to go with the under. I just think that Hawaii is a terrible offense. Nevada's not good either. They couldn't move the ball against Colorado State. I think you'll see a rock fight, similar to what we saw with Hawaii against San Diego State. 16, 14, 17, th some randomly competitive but awful game, kind of like Thursday Night Football, something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. So so just wash my hair that day <laughs> or something? Uh, find something else on TV. That's yeah. my advice. Is there anything like night. Thursday Night Football? Anyway. I want nothing to do with it. Yeah. I need to get a good Thursday bingo night going or like a book club or just something Go else to do. 
Yeah, something else to do. Um, okay, so we're going to do a recap. We're going to go through all the picks all over again. But first, I want to remind you where you can find these guys. Tim Earl, find him at Bets Earl. Tell him about all the shows that you do throughout the week. There's a bazillion. Oh, boy. Uh, ESB, every single day around 1030, we're going over everything. Nick's super pumped up because hockey started. Uh, right. So we're lots and lots of that. Uh with along with MLB playoffs, NBA starts in four days, NFL is going, college basketball, uh, college football is going, college basketball in less than what three weeks at this point. So, mm -hmm. super excited for that. Um, lots of stuff coming. I'm on Higgs's show as well. That's at noon. I hop on Morning Wood on Wednesdays. Uh, I, and then we have game time decision at five o'clock. Uh, and then we kind of we also have a, a show that we do with our, our buddy Dave, uh, every Wednesday and Friday night at 8 30. It's called uh, the Clapper Collective uh, or Nerd Talk, and we just talk football for a long time. So uh, we'll be on that tonight as well. Uh, just lots of lots of shows that I'm on every single day. Every single day. And if you want to find Tim's premium plays, use the promo code NFL. You'll find them. Why don't I'm typing it? <laughs> Sorry. We're on the winners and whiners thing, and they don't sell picks for us. So I don't have them in our deal. Um, but, okay. Promo code NFL saves 20% when you're at picksandparlays.net. Find Tim and his brother Nick's premium plays under Earl Sports Bets. All right. That's what you are looking for for the good, good. Scott Reichel, tell the people where they can find you and all your millions of shows you do through the week. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Reichel Radio, doing a lot of free YouTube videos every night for Winners and Winers. So I have a free pick every night there. Did the college football show with Steen, also on Winners and Winers. Besides that, doing Total Chaos, doing the primetime prop drop, prop it like it's hot, whatever you want to call it. Yes. Uh, besides that, doing a bunch of podcasts. Uh, you can find all that on my Twitter. And yeah, a lot of gambling content every day. Every single day. All right, guys. So like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. If you're looking for me, I'm at Plus Money Honey. Let's get down to your college football recap. Boom. North Carolina is at Duke. We're both going under the 67 and a half. Washington State at Oregon State, both going under the 51 and a hook. Air Force and UNLV, we disagree. 49 and a half. Tim goes under. Scott goes over. Fresno, San Jose State at Fresno, 47 and a half, and they both go under. Uh, Nevada at Hawaii, 49 and a half. We disagree. Oh, there it is. <laughs> we disagree again. Uh, Tim goes over and Rachel goes under. So that's the way we are playing this round of college football total chaos. Thanks for joining me. Like I always say, may the best capper win.